Good morning. Uh, welcome into twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day. How are you doing? Hey, I'm joined by the man that was here without me yesterday, so you probably know his name, but his name is Bibby. That's right. me. Wah, go good on, morning, Graham. Looking very crisp Wah, go today. On. I like, know, I know. I mean, Nietzsche's done a good job, Annie. Definitely, definitely not looking pixelated at all there. Look at that crispness. Oh, oh, oh. You love to see it. I mean, I can switch cameras. I can go back to the te- I can go back to the wide angle one if you want. I can even dig out the C two seventy from the landfill if you really want. I think I think we go back to C two seventy. This is what I'm this is what I'm looking for. I mean, this is nice. <laughs> I mean, this for this futuristic HD stuff is nice, uh, but. Um, I can I like the Roblox vibe. <laughs> yeah, you, you want that 2006 VHS vibe, don't you? That's what you want. You want not, not not quite DVD. You want that VHS copy. I, I see what you're going for. Yeah, yeah. Now it looks crisp. For those of you who don't know, I'm um, assuming you probably will have seen it yesterday. But Nietzsche uh, got fed up of Bibby using his Logitech C1 camera. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I, and thought, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm having this. I'm upgrading him. So he bought him a Logitech Stream Cam. Which is why Bib looks crisp. So, so GGs. Uh, we are not averse to taking any forms of gifts from uh, people. So, if no. you want to send stuff our way, I mean, Tito sent us edibles, and I mean that in jerky, not illegal stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, we, 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 whatever. If you want for us stuff, it's fine. Go for it. Fill, fill your boots. Fill your boots. Um, anyway, welcome in. If you don't know who we are. Just let the uh, transition play out. Nice. Uh, welcome. If you don't know who we are, my name is Graham. This is Bib. We are Ice Cream Uploads and in true Ice Cream fashion, this is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. If we do say so ourselves. Anyway, we are live on twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads. How are you doing? Hey. Uh, if you're in the chat, please do feel free to get involved. We're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories. Then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions. And then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's kind of how the whole show works. We are live on Twitch, so please do feel free to get involved. And it's important that you do because the live stream gets turned into a podcast, a video on YouTube, and an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. So there's lots of places where nearly 200,000 people have watched and listened to this show on demand. Is it, was it 200? Was it like 190 or something? Did you say, or was you taking the piss when you said that? I can't remember. I, I was definitely taking the piss. I said, yeah. I was like 200,000. The next day it was like 400,000. I, I think it's about 160. Ah, I, think that's, I think that's the, the general number. I mean, 160, if 10 a.m. ish is 11.30, then 160 is nearly 200,000. We'll take it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Rounding up, math says anything over 1.5 is, is two. So there you go. Nice. So 160,000 people have watched and listened to this podcast on demand. So if you're in the stream, please do feel free to get involved because you are the voice of those people that do watch and listen on demand. If you've got a question, chances are they've probably got the same question too, but they can't watch it because they aren't here live so please do feel free to get involved in the chat before we jump into the show we have a few stories today and i say that we literally just have a few stories we usually have a bunch of stories we only have three stories but they're big old meaty stories so do feel free to stick around before we jump into all of that though, i want to remind you that subscribers get prizes anyone that is a sub to the channel on the first monday of the month gets entered into a giveaway last month we gave away an ice cream uploads baseball cap uh well last month this month we gave away an ice cream uploads baseball cap to gaming nacho who just wins all of the prizes if it's not him it's beans so do you know what you can sub to the channel chances are you're not going to win anything anyway it's going to be one of those guys that just win the same stuff over and over again but whatever you can you can support us it's fine we'll take the support it's fine now you can sub everyone gets an equal chance just by being a sub whether you've paid for it whether it was gifted sub or whether prime uh allowed you to sub to the channel whatever it is uh you're in the, in with a chance i was gonna say you're in the hat but then that kind of blew my mind because we gave away a hat and my brain was like i don't understand how this works but uh yeah there you go uh, as well as that shout out to all of our homies exclamation mark astro exclamation mark insert coin exclamation mark gt omega uh, all of the sponsors on our channel who have helped us uh, massively over the last quarter or so we have given away astro headsets plural gt omega chairs plural and insert coin vouchers so people can bag themselves some fresh new threads plural so shout out to all those homies for helping support the streams nice uh... and at this point We'll jump into the split screen. Hey, hey, how you doing, babe? Hey, 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 hey. I see I'm muting my mic because the, ga- <laughs> the gardener's outside. So I've had the rag and bone man and the gardener. So I, <laughs> I, I'm struggling at this moment in time. For those that don't know, the, the gardener outside Bibby's house, by the way, isn't cutting his grass. Bibby's having to mute the mic because the gardener every now and then just goes, Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Turn it back off again. He's the, only man in the, he's the only man in the world that has a suppressor on his, uh, on his lawnmower. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, let's jump back up. JMK was in nice and early time. The time is currently Wednesday, 11.22 and 1 second a.m., which is basically 10 a.m.-ish. Exactly, 11 is next 10, which is ish. Perfect, nice. Tido Alrit, Timeless says another a.m. scoop. Let's go. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether I'd actually uh, be on it at all for like the next week or so. I am working on um, quite a big project that I can't tell you anything about. NDAs and that, but as I've as I wrote in the Discord, if it ever comes into fruition, I'll tell you what it was, and if it ever comes into fruition, it'll be quite cool. So nice. Um, all I know is it's going to take my time for the next foreseeable. So I, I might be on tomorrow in the studio with Bib. I might not. We will see. So yeah, nice. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what G here so early too? Yeah, exactly. It's because I've broken away from my uh, project. It was just getting to the point where I needed to like space off from it so it's, it's nice uh, double trouble today let's go i know it's been a while it's been a while morning all you lovely people the human mucus factory is here for those that don't know tido is just full of snot all the time there is nothing else wrong with him that's just his general state of mind and physicality so there you go moving ahead no he has the rona are you are, how are you, how are you dealing with it obviously you had it pretty much the same time as me in 2020 um I had it since then, and it wasn't anywhere near as bad. It wasn't great at all. It was still quite bad, but it wasn't as bad. The first time I had it, like, floored me. The second time, it was like, ooh, oh, got back up after an eight count. Nice. Uh, so, frosty, how are you dealing with it? Timeless! One year, baby. Hey. One year, baby. Ooh! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay, welcome in. Tell me, I appreciate it very much. Uh, nine months in a row as well. That's like a full year anniversary and a consecutive baby as well. So let's go, baby. Nice. Thank you very much, Timeless. Appreciate that. I also it was a pleasure to see you in um, Roly Poly's stream the other day. I had Roly Poly's stream on uh, while I was working on the couch it's on the same project that, I was, that I've been working on since. And I just said, Timeless. And I was like, Timeless is back. So, yeah, it was nice to yeah. see you. Hey, welcome back. I hope you're good. I hope you're okay. Uh, I won't ask questions and, and that because, yeah, obviously you can do that wherever. But I'm glad you're here. Nice. Nietzsche is a leg end. Um, no, he's not a foot. He's something that sounds similar, but not that. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Zelda and Gao gameplay. Gao? Gao? What, what was that? Was that? Gears of War? God. No, it's not an oh. X. No, no, oh. I'm joking. It's not an Xbox stream. Get out of here. Uh, I'll take 11.30 m scoops any day. Love me some scoops in the morning. Let's go, baby. Mm, Nintendo and PlayStation shows are two of the scoops, I'm guessing. Correct, Tamundo. Viv, good morning. Welcome in. Uh, let's celebrate with a three-month in advance sub. Is that what you've just done? Nice one, Timeless. Appreciate you very, very Legend. much. So that will take you from being 12-month sub with a nine-month baby streak up to a 12-month streak as well. So you've just gone from milestone to milestone. Appreciate that very much, Timeless. And making use of the uh, the uh, September benefit. There is only one benefit to September this year because it's weak as hell, which is why we aren't pushing it because it's not really going to benefit the community. It only benefits the streamer, really. Um, mm -hmm. So we... Yeah, whilst it benefits us, we want it to benefit you. And if it doesn't benefit you, we're not going to shout about it. So we're not talking about September much this month. But uh, you have made use of the one benefit there is. So GG's. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Nice. Uh, this time is worse. So much more bunged up. Absolute knacker than I sound like Barry White. Oh, we need to get Bib uh, Bibby and Tito on some FIFA Xbox hype just so we can listen to my first, my last, <laughs> my Tito <laughs> thing. <laughs> Uh, I worked all through the last time. This time I've been off. Oh, it blitzed me both times. Not good. Um, yep. Uh, Twitch did mess up. Twitch did mess up? Oh, with the... Ah, uh, oh, yeah. September. Yeah, they've dropped, dropped an absolute ball. Last year, it was a huge thing. Everyone was celebrating. Community guys were supporting creators. Creators were doing things for community guys. And this time, it's just like, a, hey, would you like to give money to Amazon and save a nominal amount in one particular way? <laughs> ah. It's not really September, is it? It's not really a community activation, though. But anyway, we'll put a pin in that because we've, we've had that conversation before. We can have it tonight when I do my Xbox stream, over the weekend when we do our additional streams or whatever. For now, though, what we will talk about is the stuff that went down yesterday-ish. Yesterday and a little bit more, to be, for, uh, to, be, to be exact. But yesterday, there were two... There was two big 
conferences, state of plays, and Nintendo Direct. So everything that was announced in Sony's September 2022 PlayStation State of Play broadcast, including all the trailers. That is our first news article. Uh, we have basically got a Eurogamer takeover today because Eurogamer... Um, always do very concise and very good coverage when it comes to events like these and they were they were quick to get out as well i think they actually were the first that i saw usually it's vgc gets it out first but eurogamer was the first one that i saw last night i mean i wasn't obviously trolling it was just the one that popped up in my feeds anyway wesleyan pool has that story we will then jump back in time a little bit by about 12 hours ish maybe maybe a little yeah. less but earlier on in the day uh Eurogamer also had everything in today's Nintendo Direct, which includes Zelda, uh, Zelda, Pick Me Four, Golden Eye, and Fire Emblem. And then, you know, because you know equality, and Tito's here, he's feeling a bit rough, and we don't want to feel left out. We do have an Xbox story as well. Discord Voice is now available for everyone on Xbox consoles. So we'll start off with PlayStation. We'll jump into some Nintendo, and then we'll finish up with some Discord. If you're a PC Master Race, then well, nothing for you. You just have to enjoy being a better sell, right? Fine, 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 fine. Nice. Babe, did you watch NC Direct or State of Play? Uh, yes, I was actually, uh, I was, pl well, I was hoping to maybe stream the Nindy one, um, but we always have complications with that, and I couldn't find anywhere on the internet that said that you could co stream it. So avoid like the plague, because um, obviously we don't want this channel being taken down by Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, yeah, I stayed up last night purposely to watch the State of Play live so I could talk about it today without having to go through and re-watching all the trailers and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've got me, me, mediocre opinions on both. Um, you may have said, people may have seen my tweets yesterday regarding the Ninja Direct um, and what I liked, what I disliked. But, yeah, I'm a... Yeah, slightly underwhelmed by them both, if I'm being honest, but... It, with more on that soon yeah well if you guys want to know why he's underwhelmed about the nintendo direct well we'll we'll, we'll jump into that one second uh first yeah. first off we're going to jump into uh the sony state of play one uh purely because obviously we've mentioned god of war and things like that and uh and i know more about that one so that's what we're gonna go with <laughs> nice uh <laughs> so this one was written by wesley pool at Eurogame. it says everything announced in sony's september 2022 to playstation state of play broadcast including all the trailers we aren't going to play all the trailers it was only a 20 to 25 minute ish show last night so we in theory could play all the trailers and get through the show nice but we're not going to do that because you might as well watch the full broadcast um but sony's september 2022 state of play broadcast is over in case you missed it here's everything sony announced during its 20 minute show from tekken 8 to god of war ragnarok including all the trailers uh, state of play kicked off with a trailer for bandai namco's tekken 8 captured on ps5 tekken veterans jin kazama and kazuya mishima knocked lumps out of each other in the rain yep it's a new tekken um do you know what we, we, we might as well There's, there wasn't that much uh discourse some things we can skip over or just talk about briefly but we might as well talk about them as they go in the order that they go through in this because obviously everyone will probably go i want to talk about god of war that's at the end naturally so sony saved it till the end so we'll we'll, we'll build up to that one did you see the uh, tekken 8 trailer bib i did yes i was one minute late to join in the stream um I was what I can't remember. I was watching. I was watching someone stream. Anyway, I thought, oh shit, it's eleven o'clock. I need to go over and watch it. So yeah, I missed like the first ten seconds of it. But what a trailer, man! I see. I well, kind of same thing. I was about five minutes late. Uh, I was actually stood in the, the garden waiting for the dog to have a turn. But that's a different conversation for a different <laughs> time. So uh, I went in, went upstairs, and then. I effectively started watching and then kind of skipped through doing, doing like the 30 seconds. So I went on to, because I was watching it on my my phone. Uh, so put the dog in bed, went upstairs, chilled out in bed, put it on, on my phone uh, and then was doing the 30 second like scrub forward skip kind mm -hmm. of thing. I did watch the entirety of the Tekken trailer though, just because it looked really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, let me just, uh, uh, PS, state of play. Let me bring this up on the screen just in, in case anyone comes in and just sees this without discussing now. Uh, uh september's actually state of play uh there you go do you know what it says ps just uh, i'm assuming people understand i'm gonna i'm gonna beef that out as well i'm gonna put playstation oh yeah playstation yes <laughs> uh so i watched this to begin uh to kick things off i used to be a massive tekken player i mean it's the same i've, I've mentioned this before I used to play a lot of driving games i'm not interested in driving games anymore because i mm -hmm. have fatigued myself uh i used to play a lot 
a lot of fighting games, right? From uh, Street Fighter Two was my it was a lot of people's first game, obviously back back in the day. That was the one that kicked off the hype. Going through into Tekken games on PS One into PS Two, and by PS Three, I'd given up on fighting games, so I kind of dropped off. This did did actually and grab my attention because fighting games for right or wrong have been in the press so we've seen street fighter 6 people obviously losing their mind at the fact that street fighter has turned its back on their branding style for the logo and then improving it slightly i mean making it better but still not quite the same and and so on and street fighter changing the way that they they're making their next game so it is it has a little bit more i don't want to use the words open world because i think it, i think it still is within confines i don't know if it's on rails it's not sandbox there but it's it's a little bit more like that um but looking at that and then looking at tekken um tekken just instantly i was thinking oh this looks fucking phenomenal in terms of the graphical fidelity i'll put the trailer back on the screen uh, for those that might have missed it or, or was too busy distracted by me getting typos like tito always does in the disco uh so like this looks really good real real-time rendered footage captain from a titan whatever okay that sort of stuff it's, it's ps5 gameplay stuff i should hope it looks this good this i mean i know this is a trailer but you're only looking at two people in a confined world beating each other up on screen using next gen hardware of course it should look this good when you're playing the game but yeah you come like there's a lot of people that did comparisons on social media comparing street fighter 6 to tekken 8 um and obviously the different art styles completely different art style street fighter is more of that sort of comic art style where tekken is more of the uh the dark gritty real worldy style yeah, but gritty yeah tekken just stands out to me like from the way it looks obviously this is almost has anyone seen step up 3d <laughs> there's bit there's bits where like the, wow yeah the, but there's bits where dancers like are in the rain and they flick water at the screen and it's one of those where i uh I've never seen Step Up 3D, but there was a trailer for it before, I don't know, like it might have been Toy Story or something like that. And it's one of those where you're sat in the cinema and the water flicks off someone's hand or foot as they're spinning around and it makes your head snap back because you feel like it's going to hit you in the face. Like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. And that's what this trailer kind of reminds me of. But anyway, Step Up 3D is a little bit of a cheesy thing. This just looks pretty cool to me to the to the point where... It brings back some of my fondness for the old Tekken games. And then when we see the Tekken logo and I see, okay, well, they're not having any problems with their logo. Their logo still looks Tekken, but looks modern as well. None of the Street Fighter get rid of the old kind of thing. It looks it looks cool, looks modern, looks fresh, leans into the past, looks nice, and it looks like a good next-gen game. Probably won't be enough to get me in, but I'm actually, I'm actually more excited. I was excited, air quotes, excited. I, I was... Excited's not really a great word for it. Uh, Impressed. I, I, yeah, well, I was thinking more of Street Fighter. Street Fighter wanted me to give a thumbs up to it, to the fact that, oh, look, it looks like it's modernizing. I don't feel like it's for me, but I was, yeah, impressed with what I saw in terms of how they moved it forward. I was more impressed with what I saw from Tekken versus yeah. Street Fighter. Where do you say on that one? Yeah, I, I agree. Like, when I was watching the trail last night, I always look for, I mean, it, we, we mention it quite often now. Um, I can't, I'm sure it might have been Viv or Enzo that said that trailers nowadays should be a blend of 50-50. It should be CGI and then it should be gameplay. And I feel like it's quite distinctive if you've ever played a Tekken game before in this as to where the gameplay starts and where the CGI starts. So you can just, uh, like the, the opening couple of seconds, you see him just about to punch in a CDI, uh, CDI in a CGI manner. And then it kind of breaks away, <clears throat> and you can see that you can see that two people are actively controlling the characters. Then, but then they'll blend in, where like uh, the the muscles start to beef up and stuff as they're going in for like a heavy punch. I'm not sure whether or not that's the kind of thing that will be taking place in the game now. Whether or not it will just be static side on view until the match is about to finish, um, or if you're doing a heavy move, it will kind of do like a mini cutscene. Yeah. Um, whilst you're performing that and, uh, and and connecting with the punch or kick, so you can actively see the blend in this as to where gameplay starts finishes cgi kicks in then obviously the, the, the gameplay kicks off again so yeah i think it's a nice blend it looks fantastic as you would expect from a playstation 5 uh game like you say not, not exactly pre-rendered backgrounds but they haven't really got that much going on with just two characters on the screen and stuff so you can definitely use the full power of the console without it becoming uh a, a field of view issue but yeah i think this looks great it looks it, in fact i'll say 
better than great. I think it looks fantastic, in my opinion. It, again, it doesn't necessarily bring me into wanting to play a fighting game. I think the last fighting game that I played might have been Injustice way back when on the PlayStation 4, and I haven't really got the itch to go out and play another one, really. But yeah, for again, looks looks great. I, I can't wait to see more of it. Um, do you know what? I'm hyped about the environment, and this is this is something that you have to take with a pinch. So we've mentioned it a couple of times. Bib just mentioned it again then, uh, was the fact that this is a fighting game. And we don't want to shit on fighting games, but I said there's not a lot going on because there's, there's a whole it's a whole different game concept. But But you are creating two characters and a landscape. You're not creating 22 characters like you would get in a football game or the full cityscape that you would get in a GTA and stuff like that, or 100 players in a battle royale that load their own... 200 meter circle or whatever around them i don't know whatever the, each game is programmed differently naturally the players and the moves and the uh the systems in fighting games will use all their resources elsewhere by having things be super responsive to button presses and and the, the graphics and fidelity of the environments of the player fucking hell size of this moth <laughs> fucking hell size of this moth morning neil um so yeah we're not saying fighting games are small and therefore should be great or whatever um but we are saying that a little bit as well. Uh, but looking at the environments in that, I don't want to take away from how good that is. It's, it, it, it could be easy to be misconstrued what we're saying and saying, well, of course it should look great because it's only a fighting game. That's, that's kind of what we're getting at. But it also is. Uh, but it's not. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Nice, nice, nice. Um, no, but, but it if looks like a next-gen fighting game. Yeah. Right? My, 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 my history of Tekken is... I think genuinely the first Tekken that I played was Tekken Tag Tournament on PS2. I'm sure it was one of the launch games way back when. Haven't really played one since. Obviously, this is going to be night and day. But in terms of fighting games, this is easily the best looking one that's on the market. Yeah. So this this backdrop, the water, the scene, the what looks like a broken boat that you can't see it right now in in the water behind them. If I go into this bit, you might be able to see it. Uh, yeah, it looks like a water, a boat in the sea behind them at about thirty odd seconds in it. Looks great. That looks like something you'd see in a Star Wars film. It, there's actually, mm. if anyone that's played Jedi Fallen Order, there's some scenery that actually looks a lot like this. So we're seeing EA Star Wars level of graphics in fighting games. That is phenomenal because fighting games have improved incredibly over the last five years. Uh I know they, st they still are effectively side-scrolling because that's what beat-em-ups are. That's what the FGC is used to. Um, so a lot of people will be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm past side-scrolling or whatever. But there is so much depth and 3D angles, mm -hmm. so much evolution within that. I mean, the bits that we've been talking about cutting into slow, uh, like slow-mo cutscene bits where you hit that, that tiger or cut. I know that's a wrong game, but... But uh, yeah. um, when you finally hit, when you hit those moments, I imagine that's probably something that they might put in single player campaigns. They probably won't have as much of that if you're playing multiplayer because people would get pissed mm -hmm. off at seeing that shit over and over again. So I just want to have a fight. I don't want to watch a movie. Um, but it looks really good. I am super hyped with how good that looks next gen. And there was lots of people drawing conclusions on social media as to why Tekken looked air quotes better than Street Fighter, and and they were all well because Street Fighter is going to be available on the PS4. Tekken is PS5 only. And I I do believe there is some of that in there. When you look at how much is going on in that background, not just in terms of the near ground, the mid ground, the foreground, the background, all of the ships, all of the lighting and stuff like that, like the ray tracing elements that are probably within there, but there is also a little bit difference in terms of that is Tekken's art style versus Capcom's a little bit animated sort of style. So... Um, that will also be a factor in it too. I am more hyped by this Tekken than than I have than I am yeah. for Street Fighter, definitely, hundred uh, percent. I long for a world where CGI only ads are banned for video games. Yeah, I, I don't think that's what this is. I could be wrong, uh, but I don't think that's what this is. Um, but I agree, I agree. It's just it's just misleading. Uh, yeah, it looks good, but how long will it take you to get Gon's looping video like in Tekken Three? Uh, it took uh, me and Graham three days. Uh, gone? Who's gone? I can't remember gone. I can't remember gone. I have, I have, Blue screen. I have forgotten a lot of our Tekken. So when I said play, I played a lot of uh, uh, fighting games, me and David, our first. So I played a lot of uh, Tekken One. Our first one that we owned was Tekken Two that came with our PlayStation. Um, but then obviously went Tekken Three, Four, and then I'd start to drop off by tag tournament kind of thing. Excuse me. Uh, Tekken looked incredible. Best fighting game I've ever seen, and I played a lot of fighting games. Yeah, exactly. 
so G is saying they stole the scene from Star Wars. I mean, pretty much. But it looks like something you'd see. I mean, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, I'm pretty sure, has scenes that look like that. And also, the is it The Rise of Skywalker, the, the last Star Wars film from the modern trilogy? Uh, has some scenes that also looks like that as well. So, yeah, take your pick. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, have they said if Tekken is a PlayStation exclusive yet? Yeah, it was not clear on the an- announcement. <laughs> Sorry, I just I was hoping it was Tito that said that. Uh, yeah. It wasn't. Uh, well, to me, it wasn't. It, it hasn't said, but I don't know. I, I don't actually know what the relationship is with Bandai Namco and Tekken. Like, it used to be PlayStation exclusive because that's just the only place that they made it for. But I don't know if it ever actually was exclusive, exclusive. So it might be, might be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't actually know. Does anybody know? The little dragon dude. Ah, the little green dinosaur looking thing. It looks a bit like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember. I, no way could I told you it was called Gone. I thought you'd type Jin as in like Jin Kazuya kind of thingy. And, and then it's changed the name to Gone kind of thingy. But yeah, I, I'd have forgotten that. Like there was Panda and what was the other bear that was basically a reskin version of Panda? I can't, I can't remember the bear's name. There's so much stuff. Like despite like how many hours we put into that game, I've forgotten a lot of it now because I'm an old man. Anyway, on that bobshell, moving ahead uh, to this was the only bit that I didn't really see. Because I, I was talking about I was in the garden watching the dog poo because that's what I do in an evening, you know, weird life now. Just go watch an animal mm-hmm. crap. Anyway, there was two VR titles. There was Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition. Um, and then there was Demio. Uh, and I skipped through little bits of the Star Wars one and didn't see any of the Demio one because... Um, for those that watch Twitch Mobile, this is a slight tangent, but it's shit. If you go watch a broadcast that's already started, so you go back to the beginning, say if you're five minutes late to it, when you get five minutes in, it stops. So you have to go back out and go back in again. It's like it buffers. It'll only let you load five minutes. So then you have to go out and reload. Anyway, so at that point, it's like, you know, fuck it, I can't be asked. I'll, I'll just cover it tomorrow. So I missed the Demio bit. And the Star Wars bit's not playing. This is great. No, oh, it is now. Um, did you see this? PSVR 2 Star Wars yes. Tales from the Galaxy Z. What, what are your thoughts? Both of them look good. Um, do you know what? I was more interested in the Demio one, if I'm being honest. Like the Star Wars one, I like. I, I'm not going to go on record and say that I absolutely adore Star Wars. I like Star Wars. I can take it or leave it in terms of. I'm not going to go back and go through all of the lore and stuff like that. I'll watch the film if you enjoy it, I enjoy it. But it looks, it looks really good. Um, I'm interested to to see it with my own eyes rather than through somebody else's when they're playing in VR. Um, see how tight the controls are and stuff, but the Demio one got me, you know, like, I feel like that is, that's a Bamba game to start off with, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm into card games, like, I'm into card games now, like, I'd love to be able to play d and I don't have friends to be able to play D&D, but um, I, I love card games, so that Demio one is perfect for the VR landscape, I'm interested to see how many people will be required to be able to have a good game of it, which is always what it comes down to when you're playing card games. Um, but yeah, both of these VR games look great. Just, there's a bit there that I've just looked at in the, uh, I'll put it on screen now. Um, my worry was this. This is what I saw and this is why I started skipping through. I've, I've said before that I'm interested in VR. I don't own a VR headset, um, so I'm not a VR consumer, which is part of the reason why I was willing to skip. But I I want to own VR. My issue with VR is it doesn't look like fucking Tekken 8 that we've just seen. It looks like this, which is not bad, obviously, but it's not the same. This is last gen, not next gen. That's because that's obviously all VR can handle. But then I saw this bit play. Look out the window. And for anyone that's interested in Disney in Florida, that is Galaxy's Edge. And the game is called Galaxy's Edge. Uh, or it has the phrase in the title. Um, so that made me instantly think, is this just a a promotional sort of tie-in. So that's where I kind of lost my interest in this. I went through the video just then, uh, and it, yeah, there's clearly definitely uh, clearly a lot more to it than just showing you, oh, you can mooch around Galaxy's Edge, but they definitely have gone for that tie-in here. So whereas it says now, Escape to the Galaxy's Edge, that is literally the, the, the set from Florida they've put within the game. Uh, so Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition, this one's out next year. I, will, I, I would like to play that. I just... I would prefer it to look better. 
is my yeah. issue, is my issue and that i think that's the thing for me is vr right now can't give me the visual fidelity that i want so something without seeing what demio looks like my assumption off of the key art is it's not going for super realistic so that's probably where it might be better for me so this is where we'll jump in a new ps uh, psvr game the tabletop rpg style dungeon crawler uh okay that says demo e whereas it's demio nice let's go <laughs> so you say this one's more you I think so, yeah. I think this is definitely... It, I'm not necessarily saying it was one that... It was a standout of the show. However, I'm always up for trying something new when it comes to video games. Um, so having stuff like this, it looks mint. I don't know if it would be a bit trippy with how the camera angles are consistently being moved about. I don't know whether or not it would do me head in, but it looks... Uh, for me, it looks great. It does look pretty cool. Looking at it now, so this is the first time I've seen this. Obviously, I skipped past this yesterday. It's it's Hearthstone meets Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and you're actually within the board game. Yeah, it looks like Gauntlet. If anyone's ever seen that, like the Dungeon Crawler Gauntlet, the classic. Yeah, so this is this would probably suit me a little bit more when it comes not not in terms of my style of game, but in terms of what I'd want from VR because. I fucking I love the Star Wars universe and being at Galaxy's Edge in person in Florida would would excite me. But being there in VR would also excite me. But knowing that it's a low rent version because obviously that's all the VR system can maintain, just just makes me feel like it's almost like a look at what you could have won sort of scenario. It's, mm. You're on bullseye and they've just shown you the speedboat, but you've not quite got it yet. It's a fuck. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, However, we are a million miles away from the classic VR st stuff that I mentioned yesterday. You remember the headsets like eight years ago, where you could slide your phone in the front of it, and then you end up going on a roller coaster or something like. We're a world away from that, but we still have uh, a world away to go in terms of not having the biggest fully fledged PC that's available to you and the most expensive headset that's on the market with like the likes of uh, the Valve Index and stuff. Yeah, we're a bit we're beyond halfway, but we're not quite at the at the top yet. But the the, the VR itself is going to cost probably as much as the console does, uh, which is obviously a new console. <laughs> more if Quest has anything to do. Meta obviously put the price up for the uh, the Quest Two by what was it a hundred dollars uh, last mm. month. So yeah, um, VR just doesn't appeal to me. I don't know why. Says Tito, I want VR, but I want Tarkov in VR. <laughs> I want PUBG mm. in VR. Uh, it's telling that every VR game ad shows the person wearing the helmet in a simulated situation and not the gameplay itself, like the boxing one. Uh, we need a nightmare game in VR. Ooh, imagine. Uh, some of my work industry use VR. Construction and VR are in sync when developers put the dollar, put the pounds in. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same thing. Everyone's always in sync when there's money there. ka -ching! Yeah, of course I'll do that. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Gag, gag, good after morning. Do oh, no, actually, it is good after morning now, but you probably said it when it was good morning because it's just hit 12 noon. So good morning-ish. I'll read. Um, good morning-ish. Yeah. Demio is, is, is more satisfying my VR itch, where uh, the Galaxy's Edge game, the uh, Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Star Wars game, is more sat satisfying my content itch. Neither really do both, which is where my, my issue is. So it's nice to have, and it's good to see VR stepping forward. Like Baby says, it's a world away from Google Cardboard, where you just fold a few pieces of cardboard, slot your phone in it, and stick it on your head. And you're <laughs> like, look at me, I'm studying the National History Museum. It's gone past the uh, the novel, eh? A novel he is building into function. Uh, building into function. Um, and I do think we will get there. I, I do think I think VR and the, fucking, the Ready Player One haptic suit experience is probably not as close as people want it to be but i do feel like that is where maybe in 15 years we will we will be going towards in gaming i don't think it will be a two to five years like like a lot of people wish for i think mm. it'll happen when i'm too old to wear a haptic suit and run around <laughs> that's, that's what yeah. i think um uh, for me vr is not cost effective yet uh, plus most games don't really leverage its, its selling point i tried the star trek vr game and other than being able to look around it, it, it could have just been a console game that's it that's it. it. A lot of people are just trying to reverse engineer console experiences, and you have to build it from the ground up for VR properly. They just go, oh, but we can just... This, I mean, the game we've made on console is 3D, effectively. I mean, technically, some cones are only the field of view that you can see, so it only loads what you're actually looking at. If you turn around, half the room might disappear. But in VR, it kind of always needs to be there as such. Um, but it's, the, it's, it's not the same thing. Even if you do make the room always be there, 
it's like oh, great you've made a room but how do you interact with it and uh, what are the functions and 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 you can't just use narrative to push the story along you have to it's like when you do um live action role play larping experiences if you go to do if you play resident evil or silent hill or any walking dead style game you are pushed by narrative they take you through bottlenecks that push you into certain situations if you do that in person at a zombie event you have to go with the story because if not mm-hmm. you will just realize that it's a bit clunky and a bit awkward and it's like we've got no ammo why this is shit i've not i've not mm-hmm. run past the ammo that i should have picked up whereas video game has a bling 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 pick this or you're gonna get fucked up in reality, if you don't pick it up, you need to have a guy there going, oh, there's some ammo that you ran past that you probably need because if you don't get it, we won't be able to <laughs> advance to the next bit. And it's like 3D, uh, 3D, VR is that. It has those same sort of problems. You need to be able to uh, move past that. And a lot of developers just think, oh, well, we'll just have the same. Yeah, you get it, you get it. Anyway, we don't need to go down that. So we've, we've, we've said it, we've gone over it. Um, one of the folks in London uh, have an entire floor of high rent office dedicated to VR, fifteen thousand square foot. Nice, it's fun. If only the porn industry invested more, we'd get a lot sooner. Let's face it, sex sells. Haptic suits when? Uh, to be fair, <laughs> that's a good point. Porn has launched many, many forms of technology. The internet had a large part of success due to porn sharing, I believe. I don't. I've never actually looked in the validity of that statement, but it is a statement that does get shared quite a lot. Um, Netflix and VR is also a banger. Virtual one hundred inch screen. Yeah, but you'd be like, you have to turn your head to see what's happening on the other side of the screen. Hundred inch. <laughs> yeah. So is it better? <laughs> but no, it's only on a weekend, babe. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to clip that bit now? Nice. <laughs> uh completely aside, you know, why was my cardboard floppy? It was like that when I found it. Come again. Okay, back into the article. Moving ahead. Um Sega showed a PS5 version of uh, I'm clearly gonna butcher this name. Ryu Gagotoku Studios Yakuza spin-off like a dragon Ishin. Uh, available outside Japan for the first time in February 2023. Um, I actually missed more than I thought. I thought, how did I was watching Tekken 8 though? How did I miss this trailer? Oh no, actually, I did see this. I, yeah, yeah, okay, I did see this. Um, thoughts on Like a Dragon, Bib? Really, for me? I mean, I've never played one. So, it's the same with Yakuza. I, I, I fancy it. I just never got around to playing it. And there's too many in the franchise now for me to go back through and go, oh, okay, I'll start over again. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's definitely a lot of people that this speaks to. I did see a lot of people on the like a, a dragon hype yesterday. Um, it was actually possibly the thing that I saw tweeted about the most. Not that I have a large uh, sample of data to go off. I just have a lot of people that are interested in uh, the Japanese video game culture and Japanese style. Anything that has any form of samurai elements, there's a lot of people that are interested in that. Um, so there was a lot of people tweeting about this. In the first part, like before the show had finished, this is what I saw most people tweeting about after the show. Obviously, that, that changed a little bit, but it looks pretty cool. I, I probably would not be interested in this one. I What I would say is there was another game of a similar sort of genre within the broadcast that caught my attention a lot more. Mm-hmm. Which allows us to then move on, not to that game, but to the next game in the order, which is Warner Brothers showing new trailer for the upcoming Harry Potter game, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, there's a PlayStation exclusive Haunted Hogsmeade shop quest. I need to keep scrolling down because randomly Eurogamer's video player just has a hang on a black screen. And if you scroll far enough and come back, sometimes it just starts playing. Hello? No? Nice? You gonna go? No, okay. Did you watch this? What are your thoughts, babe? Yes, uh, I've been waiting for this game for what feels like forever now. Not a massive Harry Potter fan. Never really watched any of the films. Never really read all of the books. So it's kind of, it, it's based in that universe, but obviously it's not based on all of the rest of the characters. So it's like a fresh slate for me, a clean slate. I'm happy with this. It looks fantastic. I'm definitely going to play this one. An RPG game set in a wizarding world. Come on, mate. This is like my, on, ga- my, my gateway drug into hashtag Bibby game. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got elements of things that you like with get- with things that you've never seen but never really got around to playing before. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm still excited for this. I'm still excited for this. Uh, 
I mean, obviously, it it looks great. You've got the entire Harry Potter world, but there's 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 been more and more depth added to what you're seeing in the game. Like them them mannequin things. That's that's not anything that you've seen in the Harry Potter universe previously. But that's something else that's in there. A corridor that that flies away like it's something from The Shining. Okay, we're adding something a bit spooky in there. Okay, we get we're getting what we're getting jump scary sort of stuff in there. I'm, I'm still I'm still excited for this. That look good for me. That that changes nothing for me it's not it's not a more or less i was already excited i'm now still excited nice um the fact that this playstation exclusives just goes to show that playstation is the better system uh so we'll move ahead on that note nice nice yeah nice <laughs> uh next up uh, moving on, here's Ironwood's debut game, Pacific Drive, due out 2023 on PS5 and PC. It's a first-person driving survival game set in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. This one, it was it was different. And, yeah, it and was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, not necessarily a bad way different or bad way weird. It was just it's not it's not what you usually see. I, I, I'll oh, there we go. It's fan loaded, and I'll bring it on screen now. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this, babe? Yeah, I need to I need to know more of it because I like the art style and I like the vibe. It said that it was a where is it? That it was a survival game set in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. A first person driving survival game. So when it's a driving survival game, from what I understand from the trailer is that you need to find parts to rebuild your car or to make it more uh robust in whatever's happening in this storm or whatever it is like it looks great but need to know the mechanics of the game like when you get out of your car are you in melee combat are you finding guns are you using weapons like do you need to go into shops to be able to find the stuff that's in the in the little trunkets or whatever like i need to know more about it because from what it feels like is you just basically not not necessarily trapped in your car but the majority of the game is spent in your car driving from one location to the next like yeah i need to i need the premise looks good the graphics look good the art style looks good i just need to know a little bit more of it yeah this does this does has me in, uh, have me intrigued it's the way i kind of feel like it is it's it's not cell shaded it's it's definitely not i don't want to use the words low res because cell shaded is a is an art style rather than a lack of uh, fidelity so, but it clearly they either don't have the development uh, capabilities to make it full HD ray traced all the rest. So they've gone for. Oh, wait, wait, get, you get in your bed, in your bed. Sorry, I've got a dog mooch around my feet now. In your bed. Okay, just sit there looking at me. That's fine. That's fine. Do that instead. Okay, um, so anyway, their art style is either necessity or chosen. It's it's good. It's good. You get enough of the uh, the the fidelity to get the feeling of the atmosphere to make something because the issue with something like cell shaded is if you're trying to add any real sort of scariness into that it becomes quite difficult other than making everything super dark uh this gives me the walking dead sort of vibes or state of decay sort of vibes that pacific northwest is a great setting for me i love that feeling of long roads uh leading to what are you doing long roads leading to uh like little petrol stations gas stations in the middle of nowhere pine trees and and there could be anything in the trees just seconds away from you it, uh, you go from what are you doing stop it <laughs> <laughs> he's just ragging at the carpet God damn it. uh yeah you could be seconds away from from danger even though you're still in the heart of civilization kind of thing what are you doing you little butthead Okay, just mooching around. You see him just mooching around. Yeah. Fucker. Um Yeah. I love I love the uh the the design style that they've gone for in it. Uh not love the I like the design style that they've gone for in it. I love the aesthetic and the environment that they've gone for in it. It's something completely different. Like you say, the fact that you, what, you are you just are you just crafting bits of your car? What's the danger? What comes and gets you? So it's a survival game. What's the, is it is it zombies? Is it killer flies like that episode of the x-files if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i mean it looks i'm intrigued i am i am interested i i want to play that now potentially based on that but it's also hung on the caveat of the other bits there that i'd need to know as well <laughs> the dog is just mooching around on the floor behind me what are you doing you little weirdo 
Bless him. Uh, uh, morning, all. What else from State of Play did I miss? Good morning, chappers. Good afternoon. -ish. Lightning McQueen gone insane. Driving survival game. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, yesterday was amazing. I'm not over it still. Oh, here he is. Ads fresh off his, his finishing. Nice. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one then. So we've gone through Pacific Drive. We're now into... And this one wasn't a game. More a... How do we put it? Uh, like a customer incentive scheme? Uh, PlayStation Stars. Uh, for anyone that hasn't seen this one... Oh, my God. Fucking video player. I've got to wait for it to, like... <laughs> I put it full, full screen before it. I'd let it load it up. Basically, do you know what? I'm not even going to click on this one because it's just it's just someone talking and telling you about stuff. Sony Discuss PlayStation Stars. It's a new loyalty program. It includes, air quotes, digital collectibles of well-known PlayStation things. Uh, some of which you can see in the video. It rolls out late this month. Basically, you play games, you buy stuff, you do stuff, you get rewards, you get an in-game currency. I, it sounds like the Xbox Live system. We've spoken about this before in a news article a few months ago. It sounds like the Xbox Live system where you get rewards for filling in surveys and this, that, and the other. But the bit the chap has just said, and the bit that all of the chat was saying, I made sure I looked at the chat whilst this was on yesterday in the broadcast, and they were all saying the same thing. Digital collectibles sounds like nfts which it absolutely does sound like do you know what it is <laughs> nfts is as far as i'm con concerned the only thing is is whether they are like an nft has fun it's, it's non-fungible tokens uh it, it's the fact that you can trade them if these can be traded it's an nft it's just something that they put on your account then it's like getting new avatar icons and stuff that you get from being a ps user anyway so it depends on how they boil that stuff. If there is currency behind, if they are monetizing your membership, your loyalty, then it's NFTs. It's, you call it digital collectibles all you want. It's NFTs for me. So I'm not saying it is, but it could be. It's 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 definitely not not NFTs. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then next up, we went to Sinduality. I'm oh, okay. Well, do you know what? I'll start picking up the pace. Uh. Sinduality, do you do you feel the need to talk about that one specifically, babe? Uh, no. Okay, so I'll just read the blurb. It's a, a new sci-fi third-person mech shooter called Sinduality. It's from Bandai Namco, and it's due out next year. That was a Japanese dub trailer. Um, didn't really speak to me. That's not really the vibe of the content that we have on this channel. Not this a bad thing. It might be, it might be interesting to you. Enix, I know, will probably be all over that. And then the same thing with the next one as well. A PS5 console exclusive. Uh, as Sony put it, uh, in brackets, that suggests it's also coming to PC at some point by using the word console exclusive. Uh, Stellar Blade is an action game that reminds me of Bayonetta. It's made by Korean studio Shift Up, and it was codenamed Project Eve, if you remember that announcement from 2019. It's out in 2023. Um... Do you want to talk about that one? Uh, no. Okay, moving ahead <laughs> onto that one. And uh, to another PS5 console exclusive. And this was possibly my most hyped trailer in the whole broadcast. Uh, and that is said, knowing that God of War Ragnarok followed it. Uh, even in hindsight, I still think this one had more of an impact for me. So here's another PS5 console exclusive. Rise of Ronin is a scrolling action RPG from Team Ninja. It's due out in 2024. So a bit of a wait on this one. I'll hit play on it anyway. Um, oh, can't full screen it. Nice. We'll just keep it that size embedded. Uh, so this one from Koei Tecmo, uh, which is a brand that we have actually, uh, full, full disclosure, this this hasn't Im impacted on my thinking. We have worked with Koei Tecmo back from when they were called Tecmo Koei. Uh, we've worked with them as Jelly Media before. We don't work with them right now, so we are not beholden to say that, that this is why this is my favorite game from the broadcast. I, the reason this is my favorite game is because I didn't expect it. And it came after seeing Stellar Blade and uh, Sinduality, which are two obviously very Japanese games, which I like a, a, I like the Japanese aesthetic, but I don't like very Japanese games. Um, and I thought, okay, this might be more of the same. We've got one console exclusive for the PS5 that was not really my style of game in Stellar Blade, which was followed by Rise of the Ronin. I thought, oh, okay. And then we saw bits like this. I was thinking, okay, it's starting to look a little bit more like Ghost of Tsushima now, which... Is it just a cheap rip off kind of thing? And But by the end of it, you're seeing cool uh, settings, cool um, melee combat weapons, gory stuff. Shooting somebody in the fucking face! Uh, yeah. Cool player art. Scenes of tension building like this. By the end of it, it all kind of wrapped up into... Do you know what? I'm actually... That was went from being 
nah, not interested to. Actually, I'm pretty interested in that. So Rise of the Ronin was was possibly uh, my most hyped throughout this whole conference. What are your thoughts, Bib? Yeah, I, I agree with pretty much everything you've said there. One thing that I was surprised about, though, is that the first start of the of the trailer, as the characters in that little town are walking by, it doesn't look great. It looks like a a, a mid mid PS4 game. But then when the when you like your your main guy comes onto the screen and the people that are around him in the cutscenes and stuff, they look so much better. But I don't think this is going to be as beautiful like the the scene the scenery looks fantastic i just don't think that this, this is going to be the the kind of game that you're advertising your playstation 5 for using all the power of it I, it looks fantastic in terms in the way that the style of the combat is and things but i feel like it does get let down with some of the textures and things that are in there like i think this this could have made an argument for it being one of the la- one of the later games that's on the playstation 4 and using all the power of that i don't think it's quite got that playstation file feel to this yet but we're a long way away from this game coming out so i imagine it's probably going to look a hell of a lot better so take what i'm saying now with a pinch of salt fuck i'm trying to uh pause the video but it's one of those horrible overlays where you can't actually hit the x on the the button that pop uh, the thing that pops up so bibi was talking about ps4 graphics i do agree with that completely um and I feel like that's a Bandai Namco thing in general. Uh, not Bandai Namco, Te- Koei Tecmo thing in general in terms of I, none of their games I've ever really looked at. You could prove me wrong uh, and thought, oh, this is a truly next-gen experience. I know that's a phrase that we all kind of hate because what does that mean? You just mean something that looks super high fidelity and pretty. Looking at this bit uh, from here, so we've got Cityscapes. Obviously, it's a low res video because of the embed and so on cityscapes that looks quite nice okay that could be ps5 ish but probably it needs needs to be a bit more vibrant so the colors pop a little bit more but it's when you see things like the people this guy getting punched on the floor the character art the, the models and then this captain dude stood on a ship that doesn't look like 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 the model on i mean he looks good the guy with the, the samurai sword and, and she looks good but some of them like he he yeah some of them just look a bit how for want of a better word cartoony they look yeah digital rather than real very uh, wallace and gromit <laughs> yeah yeah so um i agree but even despite that it still looks like like something i'm super interested in yeah in playing this so yeah never heard of it caught me off guard by a, a publisher that we've worked with but i've never really been interested in their games um this is the first one that's got me thinking oh okay Nice. Uh, so off the back of that, we then jumped into a God of Raw, uh, God of War Ragnarok Dual Sense controller, which I'm, you know, I've just hit play on it, but forget it because it's a, an embed on on Eurogamer's video player. There is a, a a God of War branded controller. Interesting in the fact that there's not a God of War branded PS5, uh, so dumb. which is something they've done previously. Question on that would be, is that because they can't make PS5s right now, so they've just gone for a controller? Is that what it is? Um, Because obviously we did get a God of War PS4 Pro. We got a PS4 Pro for pretty much every major Sony release. We haven't had that. This is the first one that has had a DualSense controller, unless unless I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that. Uh, It's the first one that I remember anyway. Did they make a controller because they're not going to do specific PS4s, uh, PS5s for it? Or is that just a a hardware limitation they can't get all of the parts it could be could be we don't know uh, have they actually got any branded playstation 5s out there yet game versions no no, no. so uh, you do you'd think that a game like this would be the one where it's that where the, well that and the last of us you think would be the get the kind of games that they would want to be able to focus that kind of attention on but like you say it's, even if they're just selling the plates fuck me just sell the plates <laughs> it yeah. can't be that difficult, like taking the plates off is a two second job. You've got your controller, you've got your plates, you want to rebrand it, bosh, it'll take you three minutes to be able I, to put it all together. The controller's nice though. I'm wondering whether they are sitting on, uh, if they if they sell plates, they basically give up the opportunity to sell a PS5. And I'm wondering that God of War 2018 won game of the year unanimously. Uh, I'm wondering if they're thinking God of War Ragnarok could win Game of the Year, which ten- then ties me on back into the next trailer, which I'll leave playing as we're talking. This is the trailer for God of War Ragnarok from last night's day of play. It looks phenomenal. If you haven't mm-hmm. seen any games and you had no expectations going into it, this is probably the best trailer. This is the re- There's a reason they saved it until the end. It looks phenomenal. The amount, the variety of content that's within it looks exceptional. Obviously, you might not be interested in this style of game. Fair enough. But 
it looks superb. For most people, this will ha will have, and the intent probably was from PlayStation, for this to be the game of the broadcast. That's why it's last. It got the top billing because of that. They preceded it with hardware electronics because of that. Um, yeah. The only reason I, I would say game of the uh, uh, Rise of the Ronin is my game of the stream is because it came out of nowhere, whereas this I expected yeah. to be phenomenal, which I put in a tweet last night, so I don't want to tell that. We'll, we'll get it. But this is still looks great. So my, my thinking is the reason we have a PS5 DualSense controller and not faceplates is that if this wins game of the year at the end of the year or next year or, or whatever, E3 come along or game of the awards or whatever, it starts to win all of that sort of stuff. Maybe they're going to go, okay, we will do a Game of the Year edition PS5. But if we've sold official God of War first place, we can't really do a PS5 at that point in time. So I feel like the controller, obviously, just my assumptions, I feel like the controller being released now is them going, okay, we, we want to do some add-on sales. You go to uh, Sports Direct and you buy a pair of trainers. They're trying to flog your shoelace, some crap protect and all the rest. This is PlayStation's version of that. You want to buy God of War? Would you like to buy a controller as well? It's nice, nice. But if they're done faceplates now, they can't sell the PS5s, and they want to do that, so they'll probably do that at a point in time next year if the PS5 flow is available and everyone can buy what they want. If everyone's got their PS5s, they'll probably release uh, a God of War PS5, or they'll start having the PS5 Pro conversations and release a God of War, yeah. one of them. So, yeah. This looks phenomenal, though. What were your thoughts on this? Yeah, the trailer looks outstanding like 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 say you you want the production value you want that game um that's going to stand out from the rest and yeah this is definitely this is definitely that game one thing that we'll say about the controller situation though is that they will that even if they was to sell this controller as a separate thing and then eventually they come to re repackage it up like people are going to buy it anyway but paying 60 quid for a controller and then having to rebuy the the console and the controller again because obviously that's going to be bundled up later down the line for like 550 quid or whatever the going rate might be for the get the 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 limited edition version then that's not going to put people off is it especially if you're a god of war fan they'll they'll buy it twice they'll but they'll probably buy three controllers yeah there was there was multiple people that bought multiple ps4s it's like, I've got a PS4. Oh, there's a PS4 Pro. Nice, I'll buy that. Oh, there's a Last of Us PS4 Pro and a God of War, and they bought all of them kind of thingy. Um, so I think things like that are for the collectors. It might be a case of some people that are in there that have just picked up a PlayStation and need a second controller. Well, well that'll be an excuse for them. It kind of, It's like the incentive. Oh, I'm a big fan of God of War. Uh, I need a second controller anyway because I only got one with my PlayStation because I didn't fancy buying the game's 900 quid bundle that comes with fucking everything that you've ever not wanted needed for your consoles so i didn't bother i needed a second one this is only uh five quid more same price maybe as the normal control i'll get this while i'm there so i think it it does add for that sort of add on sales but the people that would buy that i think would then probably be in to uh uh buy on the full release that said i mean the key thing with the controller is it's got an easily reversible color scheme it's it's uh White middle bits, blue out bits. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a blue, out, a blue middle bit, white outer bits, uh, and reverse the color scheme. So it it sits with it and works with it um, at that point in time. I mean, for me, I'd have probably thought of like obviously it's got the little wolf and the big wolf, which I assume um, having owned Rag uh, God of War but not playing through it, that that's symbolic of um, Kratos and whatever the kid's name begins with A. Um, I assume that's similar. Hey, like. No, that's not Eli. Like. That's Horizon. That is Horizon. A Atreus or something like that? I can't know. Okay. Mm. Something like that. I don't know. I was going to say Atreyu, but that's that's never an insider. Anyway, uh, Little Wolf, Big Wolf. I For me, I'd have gone for theming this around Kratos with hints towards his son. And then the controller that comes with the console, I'd theme it around his son with hints towards Kratos so that you can put them both together. And they work in isolation, but they work together. But, but that's just me. Artemis. Is it Artemis? That's, that's, a, that's a Disney film. Artemis Fowl. I mean, it could be. Maybe that's what it's based on i don't know boy there you go that is what he gets called by his dad all the time uh so yeah there you go so that was playstation state of play uh the biggest bits for me were naturally god of war which i think a lot of people would have been excited around uh rise of the ronin uh and then uh Maybe Pacific Drive was the bit that caught my attention. Hogwarts Legacy was a was an already opt in, and it's not changed anything else for me. All the bits in there were just kind of like, all right, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so not a bad show. It was only twenty minutes, and when I saw it was only twenty minutes, I thought it was going to be meh. But the fact that we did have Hogwarts Legacy, God of War Ragnarok, Rise of the Ronin coming out of nowhere, uh, and then something quirky in that 
with Pacific Drive, that's a win for me. 20 minutes well spent. Yeah. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Um, there's a new PS5 model already out. Just the interior is slightly different. I saw it on YouTube yesterday. I think there's three different models, actually, adds. Um, technically, I mean, it's the same PS5 as such, but they are changing the innards to make it uh, better for heat sinking uh if that's the correct word for basically yeah. getting rid of the heat um and that sort of shit but yeah it was it was <laughs> quietly released in australia i think it was we've covered it i think at that point in time it's basically the exact same ps5 there is no differences because there was there was rumors from the likes of linus tech tips and stuff that it, the new model will actually be better or worse for certain things and there was an article last mm -hmm. week i think that i saw that was actually no it's pretty much fine <laughs> it's the same or or whatever yeah. so yeah yeah um looks a little flat a bit boring um what the controller it just looks like a normal ps5 controller for me i don't think it's particularly exciting they've just put a couple of decals on the the, the pad that there has been more exciting controllers in the past um so yeah in there fine ps5 pro uh March 2023 confirmed. Bum, bum, bum. That feels a bit a bit soon, that. Uh, but then again, we are quite far into the, the life cycle of a console already. It just doesn't feel it because of lockdown. But uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, controller looks okay. Nothing I'll be running out to pre-order. Same. See, for me, Hogwarts Legacy hasn't shown me anything too special yet. It was something I thought I would be... Uh, I uh, would be an instant pre-order. But from what I've seen, uh, it's a wait until I see more at the moment. Pardon me? Um, see, I, th I, I, I disagree for me. I saw enough in the first trailer, well, the first two trailers, to be, yep, I'm interested in this. The gameplay stuff that's come out for, through, I think it was IGN as well, around E3, looks good enough for me to, to think, okay, I, I would en enjoy this probably. Uh, obviously, hands-on will confirm that. Um, mm -hmm. And then all the other trailers and stuff, like I say, the game is already a... I'm interested and would like to play this. Anything now is more likely to turn me off. If it doesn't build my hype, that's fine. It'll just keep me on a level, which is enough uh, to, for me to be in there. Heat dissipation. There you go. Uh, Milo, come here. Come here. Come here. I know the door's thudding from the wind. It doesn't mean someone's trying to get in. We're okay. You don't, uh -huh. have, you don't have to be scared. Um, so, yeah, it was It was a I'm, I'm in, and it, nothing has pushed me off buying it since then. Um, Obviously, only talking about the gameplay, and not not the JK rolling shit around that. Uh, uh, Switch Pro March twenty twenty four. Just keep rolling it back, ads. Keep rolling it back. Uh, have they said if there is multiplayer in Hogwarts? I can't remember. Uh, I, I know there's no Quidditch, which is <laughs> heartbreaking. <laughs> Hogwarts is single player, is it? Yeah, I, I mean. They have. I don't know if they've confirmed whether multiplayer. I feel like they've confirmed multiplayer will not be added via DLC, but I don't want to say that definitively. I feel like it will be a single player experience, which I do feel is a little bit of a shame because being able to run around Hogwarts with your mates, just throwing fucking wizardy spells and being a bit of a dick is just like goals. <laughs> it's like going, <laughs> going back to school, but with magic. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some people think Nintendo will release a new Switch next year to come out when Zelda comes out. Uh, yeah, that's a big thing to miss out on Quidditch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it is what it is. Anyway, speaking of Nintendo, that's a good jumping in point. We'll jump out of that and we'll jump into the Nintendo one. Um, this was obviously a 40-minute show rather than a 20-minute show. So we'll probably have to pick up the pace on this one um, because we have been live for over an hour. So we will mm. um, maybe shelve the Xbox conference, uh, uh, not Xbox conference, conversational article the discord stuff till tomorrow uh for now though we will jump through this one everything in today's nintendo direct uh i'll take the discussion now screen because that needs to change it zelda pikmin 4 golden eye fire emblem so today's nintendo direct did not disappoint do you know what i will do i will change it for this one i will go through all of the stuff and then we can talk about what we're going to talk about afterwards uh okay. Did not disappoint with a brand new look at the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, the newly titled Tears of the Kingdom, plus uh, surprise announcements for Pikmin 4, GoldenEye 007, and a new Fire Emblem game. So Nintendo uh, finally confirmed Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's name and a release date, 12th of May 2023, plus new details on what to expect from Link's next adventure, which will apparently take him, quote, to the vast lands of Hyrule, uh, up into the skies and into an expanded world that goes beyond that. Uh, then. We uh, got uh, originally confirmed by Yuri Gamer, uh, to Yuri Gamer by Shigeru Miyamoto in 2015. Pikmin finally gave us 
I'm getting licked by a dog. No, and a fifth of first peeler for pizza. Pick me for. Okay, this is this is what I'm having to put up with. This is what you're not seeing whilst I'm on screen. I've got. <laughs> Here we go. No. Oh. Okay, back into the news. Uh, Pikmin Four has been confirmed. Nice. Uh, we then got Fire Emblem Engage. So it's another huge announcement that came in the shape of Fire Emblem Engage, the next main game in Nintendo's strategy series. We then got GoldenEye 007, which was simultaneously added by Nintendo for its Switch Online and uh, plus expansion pack subscription, uh, as well as directly by Rare for Xbox Game Pass via Twitter, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Rare have got a deal with Xbox, uh, but also wanted it to be in the Nintendo Direct. So give it Nintendo for the exclusive and then quickly went, also Xbox! <laughs> yeah. So they didn't uh, ruffle feathers there. So other upcoming Nintendo 64 games headed to the description were also detailed, including Pilot Wings 64 and Pokemon Stadium. Um, uh, the new version of 007 adds online multiplayer to the Switch version, while the Xbox edition has 4K visuals. We got Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, a remake of the original uh, Wii game. We got uh, Splatoon 3, uh, its first post-launch Splatfest. Uh, uh, we'll ask you what you'd use to survive on Desert Island. Gear Group, all fun. Look, look out for that over the weekend of September 24th. Splatoon 3 was absolutely shit in numbers, by the way, um, in Japan. I think it was like, I think it's Nintendo's fastest selling three-day game in terms of it was like three and a half million copies sold in three days. I think it's the fastest game they've ever had doing that. Splatoon! Bear in mind all the other games that are on uh, Nintendo consoles, all the Mario games, all the fucking Zelda games, all the Pokemon games, and Splatoon is the fastest mm -hmm. selling three day game. Sheesh. Anyway, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Third Wave of DLC will arrive this winter with eight more tracks, including uh, Merry Mountain from Mario Kart and uh, Tour and Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS. Uh, Bayonetta 3 uh, arrives next month. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Expansion Pass Volume 2 will let you add new mechanical looking hero Eno into your party. Uh, Mario Strikers Battle League will get uh, a second free update, which is good because the content wasn't really great in the first update, but there you go. Uh, Nintendo Sports, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, its long-awaited golf update got a slight delay to this winter. Uh, today's footage showed local player and new eight-player online survival mode. I noticed Bibby did sit yes! forward there. How are you going to say it? I noticed you did sit forward as I said the yeah. word go up there. Uh, Octopath Traveler 2 had an announcement trailer. A brand new Final Fantasy theatre rhythm game was also confirmed. Uh, the beloved indie masterpiece Tunic will arrive for Switch on the 27th of September. Project Zero Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, uh, or, or Fatal Frame as well as Project Zero, launches outside of Japan for the first time in 2023. Uh, critically acclaimed co-op uh, co game It Takes Two will come to the Switch on 4th of November, it was confirmed. And that's the same day as Final Fantasy-esque farming game Harvestella, which gets a Switch demo today. Uh, speaking of farming games, Rune Factory 3 Special will launch on Switch next year and all uh, and an all new Rune Factory is a development. Uh, want more farming games? The game uh, Cube Harvest Moon Classic A Wonderful Life will return on Switch and another farm game, Fair Farm, launches exclusively for Nintendo Switch uh, in spring 2023. Uh uh oh actually the Story of Seasons Wonderful Life. Another another franchise we've worked with. Nice. We've won a corporate award for Story of Seasons. Lovely. Uh, another GameCube classic, the role-playing game Tales of Symphonia Remastered, arrives to Switch in 2023. Various Resident Evil games are coming to Switch via cloud versions, including Village on the 28th of October. That didn't come through, by the way, but then you just leaned forward and opened oh. your mouth. <laughs> <coughs> that, was, that, was me, that was me making a sick noise. Oh, okay. Um, also coming are cloud versions of Resi 7, Resi 2, and Resi 3. Uh, Master Detective Archives Rain Code from Ubisoft. There's Just Dance, of course there is. 2023 edition on the 20, uh, 22nd of November. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope on the 20th of October. As we found out the other day, the lot will include a Rayman post-launch expansion. We also got a look at Oddballers, a party game coming in 2023. And more. There is more. Do you know what? We'll drop the link to this article in the chat because obviously there's a lot for us to go through there uh, in the limited time that we have, we're already over time in this stream. Uh, so, Bib, anything in that standing out? I mean, obviously, Legend of Zelda is what they finished with. Uh, I say finished with, which is what they started with. Uh, that's the big, the big bit of news. Is there anything else beyond that that caught your attention? Yeah. Well, they actually they actually closed the show with. How did they close it? Uh, yeah, they closed the show with it. Oh, um, Tom, uh, Tom Phillips has just just, did... done, just done me dirty by putting it first. God damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think mean, that's that's the that's what they want people to click on in it. Uh, but yeah, they actually closed the show with it, which 
I loved the I loved uh, Breath of the Wild. I thought it was great, and I do think it was the perfect launch title for the Nintendo Switch. From what I'd seen in the very brief trailer that we got for that, was like they haven't really made that much of a graphical upgrade on that game. I, it looks very similar, in my opinion. It looks like, do you remember when we were talking about Sonic Frontiers, about how the barren the, the land is, and it, it looks like a launch game for the Nintendo Switch? That's what I got the vibe from this from. It, for, for me, it doesn't feel like they've moved the game and evolved it on a little bit. Like The draw distances looked a hell of a lot better, but I don't think it looks like a game that's towards the end of a lifespan or middling on in the Nintendo Switch. We keep on making jokes about the, the Switch Pro, but if you want to bring a game out like Zelda and you want to try and evolve the wheel, I don't believe that this is the graphically the, the, the best a Zelda game can look. There is much better looking games on the Nintendo Switch that's using every single bit of the juice that's available to them that drains your battery life because it's that good. I don't believe that this is the game that's going to be doing that. I, it doesn't look fantastic. It's going to be more of the same. It's going to be, well, I say more of the same. It's going to be more Zelda, which you can't really beat when it comes to an uh, adventure RPG game. But I don't believe graphically or from what I've seen so far is going to be that great. It's like when we've seen Legends Arceus, the Pokemon franchise, and then you, you get into the world and it's just a little bit dead. Like the, yeah. there should be more trees over here. There, there needs to be a little bit more going on with that game. And it, it's killing me to say it because I know full well that this game has the potential to, to be the best adventure RPG game that has ever been. Breath of the Wild absolutely is uh, towards the top of that leaderboard. But with this, yeah, I'm expecting bigger things. And from what I've seen so far, I don't believe it's I don't believe it's evolved enough to to warrant that kind of merit. Yeah, I mean Ads has kind of played both uh your points there as well in the chat. Um tell me Switch isn't powerful without telling me Switch isn't powerful. Cloud game. So obviously we're talking about Resident Evil having yeah. the games coming to it. So Ads is um aware that the Switch is a poor console in terms of processing power. It's a handheld. It's a few years old now. It's five years old now. Mm. So uh, well, it was it? It was released in March 2017, so it's five and a half years old now. So uh, it's getting on a bit. That's a full console life cycle ish. Um, uh, that said, it's still hit him as in true ads fashion. Zelda, though, I cried. It's uh, but even still, he knows that there's gonna that there was technical limitations. And even though I did play the trailer on screen, I'll bring it back on now so you can see for yourself in these parts, the game doesn't look as good as as some of the, the lesser games in the PlayStation conference because it's the Switch. It looks almost like that 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 Pacific Drive game in terms of the art style. It's 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 gone for realism, but it's also still quite animated at the same time. There's I don't know there's a there's probably a, a way of describing that that I'm just not aware of that would help me describe this and Pacific Drive and Immortals Phoenix Rising and that sort of stuff. Like uh, stiff. Nice. 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 Uh it still looks great. Zelda Breath of the Wild, like Bibby said, is, is up there with the best RPGs of all time. It, I, I say up there because some a lot of people will say it is the best RPG of all time. A lot of people use it as the barometer for not just RPGs, but Nintendo games, particularly modern Nintendo games. Um, so this is huge. It is hampered by the hardware. There is no getting past that. It is. And it could still look decent. It could still be a great game. Mm -hmm. For me, it falls into that, what I was talking about, about going to a zombie thing in real life or playing in VR. You have to have allowances. A lot of people, it's not a problem. That's not even a thing. But for people like me that are used to your full 4K, 1 million FPS, super RTX graphic -y sort of stuff, dropping into something like Zelda, I know I'm playing a game. I'm not playing an experience. I know the story yeah. will become an experience, but I have to make myself disconnect from the world and, and connect to the story other games just have mm -hmm. that and i feel like it's not it's it won't be a problem for zelda fans but for people that aren't zelda fans zelda is being let down by the by the ecosystem it is in is what we what, what there is yeah. you cannot convince me otherwise there, there is no discussion there the switch is doing things above it's punching above its weight it's doing things above its pay grade uh with with stories and gameplay experiences as good as what it has with the likes of Zelda and, and Co. 
if they had a better system, it would just be so much better for the for the users. And and I wouldn't be surprised if we get what what Sony's doing now with the likes of The Last of Us Part One and remastering games within a decade. I wouldn't be surprised if we get remasters of Zelda Breath of the Wild coming out as DLC for Nintendo next mm -hmm. five years or whatever. It's all right. You, you little stress head, come here, come here. It sounds like a it sounds like a door needs a bit of WD for <laughs> it. It just it just. Because Danielle's Rusty not gate. here and the door's shut, he feels like he's missed out. She's locked out or something like mm. that. So well, I want to get her. Oh, uh, is it time for a Switch Two rather than Switch Pro? We're seeing numerous competitors with Steam Deck and other portable PCs. Could Switch become unviable or different markets? I mean, the issue there is it's it's a good conversation actually. It's one that we've not really got time for now, but it, there is a good conversation there because Switch Two arguably is generational. So Switch becomes irrelevant. Switch two games you can't play on the Switch, and Switch is such a big and new install base that hasn't been fully tapped. I know, man. Um, that that Switch are effectively getting rid of a lot of users that are still willing to spend a shitload of money on their system. So I feel like a pro is is what is for me the best way to go for them right now. I would like a Switch 2, something that gives me bigger uh, screens and better battery life and more function and better online systems, although that <laughs> Nintendo as a whole. Um, I feel like for me, Nintendo's best play is to stick with the Switch in a form of a pro and satisfy the market that they have mm -hmm. and make games like Xbox did. Uh, Xbox one x compatible or enhanced, whatever it was. For the last generation, they didn't go, oh, fuck, the Xbox yeah. One's a bit shit. Let's make a One X, which is super powerful, and then make the games work on both. I think that's the best way that they mm -hmm. could do it. Um, OLED uh, was Switch 2 or 1.5. Tido, no way Nintendo do a Switch 2. They've never numbered consoles in Japan. Uh, I mean, moving the needle on raw processing power. Yeah, I, th I feel like they, they have to do that in the ecosystem they have. Uh, Switch Pro is basically Switch 2 without number 2, in my opinion. Nintendo have always been a gen or 2 behind on power for their home consoles. Switch U 2024. <laughs> <laughs> mm. and nintendo have the games and franchises that will always make it relevant nintendo have always been i've uh, never been massively fussed by other companies games they are focused on their own games sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't you'll get the generation like the wii which was just stupid as fuck and that's never going to work and oh my god that really worked to the switch which mm -hmm. uh, to the wii u which is like oh okay this is gonna actually that didn't work at all to the switch which was stupid who wants to fucking stand in the garden with a little fucking key ring and play games with your mates one two switch i don't think and then all of a sudden the world mm. runs switches so nintendo do their own thing but they don't get left entirely behind when it comes to hardware they do their own thing and they are usually behind but within touching distance and the the, the issues is they are that gap for touching distance is becoming quite a big gap so if they don't keep moving forward then the, it will be too far to the point where Zelda, uh, Zelda, Switch can't just live on its own games. Oi, mouth. Switch can't just live on its own games. <laughs> Get after. Uh, it has to have third-party games in there as well. And the reason the, the Wii U died was because I think it was numerous third-party publishers came out and said, we are stopping development for games for the Wii U. And that was it. Once one did it, the next one did it, and everyone else did it, and then the platform was dead. Uh, if they don't allow developers to make it easy to move I can't think of, uh, the rise of Ronin game in 2024 to the Switch, then they'll just go, well, we're not even going to consider that. It doesn't become part of our plans. Switch becomes irrelevant. We won't make games for it. And if the gap between PS5 and Switch becomes so so monumental that it's not easy to convert that, then developers just won't move stuff over, which will indirectly kill the console so that i feel like for their own survival they need to keep themselves within that arm's reach just so that people can go okay we'll get rid of the, the, the 4k we'll make it 720 uh and we'll get rid of the draw distance from 500 meters to make it just be 100 meter draw distance and that'll do nice it'll work Doosh. nice uh uh read disrupting the game by reggie fils May, the former head of nintendo america i open an account on how nintendo operates yeah he's it, it, a really good he's it, better now he is not part of nintendo reggie uh, because he has a lot of interesting insight on the market that he can share now. Obviously, not talking about Nintendo, he still obviously will be beholden to his NDA stuff there, but talking about the other uh, the other sides of the market and his opinions on that stuff, he has some really good opinions, does Rich. Anyway, Nintendo don't care. They, uh, they have the opinion they are strong enough. A lot of Japanese companies do, and then they go bust. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a reason why Sega isn't the number one games manufacturer, whereas it was. Uh, and there's a reason why Nintendo isn't when it always has had the potential to be and uh, be and so on. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we are going to pause it there. We did have another conversation piece. Uh, I said that we care about Xbox, but we clearly don't, really, because, you know, who does? God. Uh, so we have a conversation piece about Discord is now available on Xbox consoles. Well, there you go. There you go. That's that's it. We talked about it the other month when it came to the Xbox Insider program. But if you've got an Xbox and you, everyone keeps going, have you got Discord? And you go, no. And you have to put earphones in your ears and use your phone and stuff. And it's just like, ugh, well, you don't have to do that now, which is better than what PlayStation has. So GG's Xbox. And that kind of covers it. We don't probably don't even need to move it forward to tomorrow. Nice. Um, Urban Warfare. I like the jersey. Go Jags. Cheers, dude. Thank you very much. This is old school. This uh, this is my I'm, I'm chilling out at home. Uh, Jersey, so nice. Cheers, dude. Um, I did see another first time chat. Oh, it wasn't even first time chat. It was uh, Gwendolyn Hammerschmidt, which is a name and a half. What's up, lads? Welcome in. You're probably not still here, but I appreciate you dropping in. And I did see Code Red, uh, Code Red as well dropping in. Uh, did you discuss Goldeneye yet? Uh, we kind of skipped past it really because we didn't really have the time. Um, we might, if anyone wants to, if anyone has, uh, Anything that they would like us to discuss, we could revisit this tomorrow. Just let us know tomorrow as the show goes on. Uh, you've got a long nose, floppy ears beast in your face. Uh, that's, yeah. my, that's my dick. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, on that bombshell, we are going to disappear. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around for the stream. We appreciate it. Timeless, once again, thank you very much for dropping a sub in the middle of that. We appreciate you very much. Don't go anywhere because we are going to pass on some love to one of our friends. Also, remember, 6.30 tonight, I will be back with that with less whining from this little dude uh because i will be playing some games i will be chasing crates with mates expect to see the Drugermeister in lotus you can probably expect to see uh the bike seat sniffer himself lotus uh, lotus no nichio even though <laughs> he wasn't around last week and then we usually get completed by one of our buddies be that beans or be that neil or whatever so do feel free to join us from about half six tonight as we go chasing crates with mates even last week we even got a Bibby cameo for like three games. I know. Bibby jumped into some PUBG last week. If you didn't see it, you missed out. God damn. Yeah. So 6 30 tonight, we'll be back with games. Um, also, me and Bib were talking about it pre stream. Uh, nothing was confirmed. Um, but we have been having conversations with Activision. We are making friends. Obviously, Ice Cream Uploads is becoming a bigger channel. People yeah. are seeing us. People like what we do. Just a, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were chatting with... I mean, Bibi didn't know this, actually. Uh, we were chatting with Techland, who make uh, Dying Light at Gamescom. I, I, I was chatting to Techland at, at Gamescom. Uh, at the same time, Bibi was in London at a secret event, which... Did you, did you, oh, you have said what it was. You can say what it was yeah. now. Yeah. So Bibby was playing PGA 2K23 early. Nice. Uh, we're also, we're chatting with, with Activision, building relationships there. So we might be even playing some Modern Warfare 2 this weekend. So if that's a game that you're interested in, uh, obviously we've said uh, Call of Duty is a game that we, we like. The World War 2 stuff, not so much. But Modern Warfare is coming out soon. So we might be playing that this weekend. We might not yeah. be. We might not be. It's, it's something that might, might be extra. So, so, you know, if you know, you know. If you don't know, Nice. I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, but before any of that stuff happens, before we talk about PGA 2K23s, before we get privileged access to the Modern Warfare betas and so on, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Mr. Bib? Yes, again, you should all know the you should all know the score by now. But if you have any news that you want us to talk about and you want to add your thoughts and opinions on top of our thoughts and opinions, there is two ways that you can do so. First of all, find us on social media. It is at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media platforms. So if you're watching this on any of our on-demand services, go into the description below. All the links that you require will be listed there below. Oh. But all we need from you is a URL plus your thoughts and impressions. <laughs> we will then give you our thoughts and impressions on the oh. very next show. At what time tomorrow? Instagram day. Well, that, my friend, will be at 10 a.m. <sighs> uh, that, if it goes ahead, and if I can break off from my project, that's all I'll say, then this will be our first studio stream for about 75 years. <laughs> yeah. So that, that'd be nice. I think about three weeks ago, I think was the last one. Yeah, which is funny because that was our first one for like three weeks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every three weeks, we'll see each other in the studio. So so if you want, pro tip, if you want to make good content, get yourself a really nice studio that's got cool lighting that's got cameras that's got screens it's got pcs it's got functions and mics and all the stuff and then just never use it that's that's and how you do it. never use it yeah, yeah. exactly that's how you do it <laughs> nice okay stick around we're gonna drop a raid on one of our friends but we appreciate everyone for sticking around now this has been a long old stream uh and if you're watching on youtube 
do feel free to drop a comment down below to let us know that you have watched this because we do see every comment and we usually respond to every comment too because we, we, we have the freedom for that because we don't get a lot of comments. So, you, you know, you could be the only person that comments. You'll get 100% mm. of the... Anyway, do it. Feel free. Feel free. We'd love to speak to you. That's it from us. Have yourself a beautiful day. Until next time. Stay frosty. Nice.